right, get some energy because what series are we in right now? Energy. All right, how many people have been leveling up their lives in the last couple weeks since we started? We leveled up the vision that we have for our lives. We've leveled up this um, uh, relationships that we have in our life. And today we're going to be talking about leveling up not only our physical but our mental health. And how many people know our physical and mental health, um, that, also fi- or that also affects our emotional health. How many people need to get healthy physically? How many people need to get healthy mentally? How many people need to get healthy emotionally? Well, that's what we're talking about today. And so how many people are back in the gym? 2019, you are back in the gym. Um, uh, I have been enjoying going to the gym, but then I came across this, pint- you know, beautifully curated graphic on Pinterest, which means that it, it's practically the Bible because it's on Pinterest, right? Anyone? Um, we just go at Jesus Christ and then we're like, we're good. So, <laughs> uh, but I came across this, this quote and it says this, and let me just disclaimer, chill out. Let's, 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 not, let's take it easy here this morning, all right? No, how many people are going to make the choice to not be offended by anything this morning, right? All right, that's great, because offense is a choice. So it's your choice. Just giving you that warning. Okay, here we go. Let's stop making losing weight the most amazing things our bodies can do. <laughs> it's not my quote. It's at Jesus Christ or something like that. Um, but I hesitate to endorse this statement. I think it's a good statement, but sometimes I hesitate to endorse the statement because I do think that, you know, trying to lose weight is a great thing. And I do agree that we shouldn't use something like this as an excuse to stop pursuing physical health. Um, Because, hello, God gave us wisdom, right? So there is like a medically, you know, appropriate weight for all of us, right? And so I want you to know that before I go into this message, and this is why I told you to... to choose to not be offended, is that we are talking about physical health, but we're not talking about just losing weight. Because that's not the only amazing thing that our body can do. I kind of want to flip the script on you, and I want you to know and understand that Psalms 139, 13 through 16, talks about how our bodies were formed, our inward parts. You, God, knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. But you know what he was talking about? His, your, our inward parts, our intestines, our stomach, our heart, everything, our inward parts, everything that we are physically, God made and it is good. My frame was not hidden from you. But when I think of the word, my frame, I also think that that's also our capacity. That's also the the amount of energy that we have. My frame is not hidden from you. You are the one who tells me what I have the capacity for, the energy for, and what I don't have the capacity or energy for. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, the days that were fashioned for me, the days that were ordained for me when as yet there were none of them. When God knit you together physically, purpose was woven in that. That's what Psalms is talking about. And I know anybody who's ever been to fashion knows this. And even, you know what, Josue, what a way to announce fashion the way you did. Brothers are about the sisters in this house. Thank you. But we are formed on purpose with the purpose, and for a purpose. So this morning, I want you to know that being physically healthy and being mentally healthy are not mutually exclusive. And they can't, they can't be dissuaded or they can't be separated from our purpose. We're right now reading a book with our leadership team at our church, at our church, at Project Church, the pastoral staff and some of our admin team. We're reading a book and it's called Being a Life-Giving Leader. How many people in this house want to be a life-giving person? We want to be life-giving people. And whether or not you consider yourself a leader, you are influencing an area of your life. You're influencing your kids. You're influencing the coworker that's in your cubicle that you get annoyed with all the time. You're influencing them. You're influencing your family. You're influencing even the people on Instagram and your friends on Facebook. You are an influencer. Are you a life-giving, life-giving leader? 
Are you a life-giving influencer? Because here's what Tyler Reagan says, the author of the book, A Life-Giving Leader. He's a pastor and a, um, a CEO of a large um, conference called Catalyst. And here's what he said. It's not optional to be healthy. It's crucial. It's crucial. And so I want you to remember that as we go into this and understand that physical and mental health are so important. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 says this, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Every intricately woven together part of your body was created for a purpose. So let's get healthy physically. Let's get healthy mentally. Let's get healthy emotionally so we can live out the call that we have on this earth. Here's what happened to me about a couple years ago. I was so tired, and I've told this story a couple times, so I hope, forgive me if you've heard this before. But I came from my sister-in-law's wedding in Seattle. And how many people know that when you have three kids, four and under, and you are the family member of the person getting married, it's not really a vacation? I mean, (laughs) and so I was like, Oh, look, we get, got back from Seattle. We sent the kids off to school and we're like, all right, freedom. I'm here. I'm home. And I just sat down and was despondent. And I'm like, I'm exhausted. But my kids are gone. I have, I have all the time in the world. I have all the energy I should have in the world because, like, we were just on vacation. And then I thought about what our vacation was like. And I was despondent. And for three days I was in this rut. Three days I was in this dark place in my mind. Three days I was thinking, what is happening to me right now? My husband asked me, well, what do you do for yourself? I'm like, oh, my gosh, self-care, blah, blah, blah. I know, self-care. I'm caring for myself. I get pedicures like and manicures like once or twice a month. That's like, he's like, that's an hour or two hours of your whole month. What are you doing for yourself? And so I kind of said, all right, I'm going to go to the gym. And it's not about going to the gym. It's not about losing weight. It's not, look, it's not about just looking aesthetically pleasing. It's about getting healthy. Because what do I want to do as a minister of the gospel? What do I want to do as a mother? What do I want to do as a sister? What do I want to do as a daughter? I want to live my life in the strongest, full capacity possible so that they can rely on me, so that I can pursue the call that God has placed on my life and I can do it for as long as I can in the strongest way that I possibly can. What has God called you to do? Are you healthy enough to do it? Are you healthy in your body to do it? If you've been called to work with UPS and if you've been called to work for the Postal Service, are you strong enough to do it and do it well and have energy? If you're called to... If you're called to be a researcher in, in the hospitals, are you, are you, is your mind sharp enough to retain all the information that you need to retain? If you're called to be a student right now, are you retaining all the information you need to know from the, all the books you're reading? Because I know you have a lot of book reading. Let's get healthy because God has called us to something and we're not going to do it well and we're not going to do it to the glory of God if we are unhealthy. We're getting healthy this morning. So Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Let's be rejuvenated and energized by words from Paul. Paul writes Philippians with such um, overwhelming joy for the church of Philippi. And so people, um, people don't realize that all of the letters of the church to the church from Paul aren't just like, you guys are doing this wrong and this wrong and you need to get better at this. In Philippians, he is just saying, come on, church, you're doing good. Keep going. So that's what I'm here to tell you. Come on, church, let's get healthy. Let's keep going and doing the things that God has called Project Church to do, not just as a church, but each person here who is the church. God has called you to do something out where you are planted and where you are placed. Come on, church, let's get healthy. Come Come on, church, let's glorify God. Come on, church, let's make him proud. Come on, church, let's make him famous. That's what we're talking about this morning. So we're going to go into Philippians 4, 6 through 8, so that we will be energized by the positivity that we hear from Paul, who is in a jail cell, who is in prison, yet he has overwhelming joy. He has unexplicable joy despite his circumstances. Some of us are saying, I'm not going to get healthy because my circumstances stink. But guess what? 
This guy is in chains. This guy is far away from community. This guy is saying, come on, church. We can do this. Let's get healthy. What do we have to lose when we are unhealthy? I want to submit to you one thing. Well, excuse me, three things. First, a sound mind. A sound mind. We create peace and joy in our world through our minds. And other people can experience peace and joy because of the way we act, but we act because of the thoughts in our minds. Are you creating peace and joy? Without a sound mind, we lose the ability to fight the good fight of faith, to withstand adversity, to withstand adversity and hardship. And that's what Paul's doing. So let's read it, Philippians 6, 8, 4, 6 through 8. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. If you think about these things, you're going to have a sound mind. You're going to have peace. You're going to have joy. And whatever is overflowing, that that peace and that joy is going to permeate the atmospheres of the rooms that you walk into. What else do we have to lose when we are unhealthy? Effective witness. How many people want to make Jesus famous? How many people are wanting to say, hey, Jesus, I'm about this Jesus guy. I'm committed to him. I want to follow him. You, I want you to follow him too. Well, how healthy are you? This guy's going to affect if people want to follow Christ or not. Listen, I'm not saying that we have to be perfect. You know, I'm not saying that we have to be perfect. And we've all said this over and over from stage even that no one wants to be part of a dysfunctional family, right? But what's worse than having a dysfunctional family? I thought about it for a second. I was like, I know I come from dysfunction. There's dysfunction all around me, probably in my own family of five, okay? Um, I'll I'll just be honest. And if you're being honest with yourself, you know, another thing about sound mind is being self-aware. So I know that there's dysfunction in my little family of five. But what's worse than that to me is having no hope or no tools to get functional. And your tool to get functional is the word of God. And your tool to get functional is to think on things that are true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Those are the tools that we have. So let's not, let's not get caught up in trying to be perfect. God has called us not to be perfect, to be a work in progress. And we are his workmanship, so we want to show the world that we're allowing God to shape us, form us, transform us for the glory of God. And what else do we have to lose when we are unhealthy? Three, the ability to love others well. When we don't have a sound mind, when we don't have peace, when we don't have joy, I'm going to tell you this much. I'm sure unforgiveness is somewhere in there. I'm just going to throw that out there. I was like, I was going to try to figure out a really cool way to weave in, like, unforgiveness. But, I mean, let's just call it for what it is. There are some unforgiveness in our hearts that causes us to be unhealthy in our minds and emotionally. That keeps us separated from people. That keeps us separated and isolated from community that God has called us to. The, uh, the conversations and the confrontations that we have not yet had because of unforgiveness is keeping us from having a sound mind. So let's just throw that out there. We are going to lose the ability to love others well when we are unhealthy. So how do we regain our physical and mental health? I got like a heavy load of alliteration for you this morning. R is my letter and it makes me feel really good, the perfectionist in me. Anyway, anyways. (laughs) Number one. How are we going to get physically and mentally healthy? We're going to repent and request. Repent and request. And let me explain that a little bit more after I reread what we read, Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, by repenting and requesting, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, I'm not saying this morning that anxious thoughts are innately a sin. Sin. It's just a natural knee-jerk thing, I understand. But we do have to understand that the root of a lot of anxiety 
is our thought that we can figure everything out on our own, that we can control things, and that we got it. I 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 found myself saying that to Caleb when I'm getting ready in the mornings because something in me just feels like I can do lunches, I can make breakfast for him and for me and get the kids' breakfast ready and, like, all the backpacks ready and all the kids' dress. I feel like I could do it all. And I'm like, I got it, I got it, I got it. And then, like, five minutes before I leave, I'm like, Caleb, you need to do this, 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 you know. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's part of the dysfunction I was talking about. Um, but but let's, let's understand the root of Chrissy's dysfunction. It's pride. It's me thinking that I can handle everything. And then towards the end, when I'm like going to be late again, I'm like hyperventilating because I'm anxious and I'm full of anxiety. And I know that's a small, small example. And I know that people are dealing and struggling with things that are far worse than that. And I want to say, get medical help. That's good. That's something that God gave us. Again, hello, wisdom. God has given us wisdom. God has given us doctors. But I do want you to understand that when we can humble ourselves and repent of thinking that we we can't handle things on our own and request things that we need, which might be wisdom from doctors, which might be wisdom from friends, which might be even wisdom from just being vulnerable with one another, then that's what we got to do to humble ourselves. Humble ourselves. If you don't think that anxiety or anxious thoughts are connected to pride, let me read to you First Peter 5, 5 through 7. It says this, likewise, You who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties, all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Now I want you to see this. Clothe yourselves with all all of you with humility. You're not going to be able to clothe yourself with humility when you still got that anxiety, anxiety coat, that anxiety cardigan, that anxiety leather jacket, anxiety sweater, that anxiety hoodie on you. You're not going to be able to clothe yourself with humility. So you need to cast those anxieties off of you and humble yourselves. It's connected. Our anxiousness and our anxiety are connected to our pride. So I'm saying just ask God for forgiveness and request wisdom from heaven on how to handle it. And he'll give you a way. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, let this encourage you. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's not saying get over the anxiety. He's not saying just shake it off. Just, Just stop thinking that way. No, he says, he says, let me clothe you and you clothe yourself and you put it on and you receive the humility and bow your heart and position yourself and posture yourself in such a way that you might receive grace to deal with that anxiety. That's all he's asked us to do. It's not on you, it's on him. It's not on you, it's on him. The good God, the good grace that he is, let him help you figure it out. Repent and request. Number two, how we can we regain physical and mental health. We need to refrain and retrain. You guys, I got really excited about these points. You got to be excited with me. Donica, thank you. <laughs> Verse 7 says this, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Again, this is Paul encouraging us. Let the peace of God, again, it's not on us, it's on him. Let the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This idea of allowing God to guard our minds requires that we make supplication and give thanksgiving to the Lord. So let your requests be known to God. We still have to do something. We still have to do something. I'm not saying do nothing and just be like, clothe me with humility. No. Like, it's, it's do something. Offer prayers of supplication and give thanks to God. Because here's the thing that I find when we're trying to get physically and mentally healthy. One of the biggest roadblocks I see is this thing called victim mentality. And like everything that happens to you is everybody else's fault. And we have a hard time taking responsibility for the things that we find ourselves in. Am I stepping on any toes? 
I step on my own tone sometimes because here's the thing. Guarding, guarding our heart is something that God has commanded us. It says in Proverbs, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. Guard your heart. So guarding on our part is going to be refraining from things and retraining our minds right? Refrain and retrain. It's our choice. Some of us are a victim not to other people and what other people have done to us, but we are a victim of our own choices. So what choices do we need to make? I believe we need to refrain and retrain. Refrain from some things and refrain from making those choices and start retraining ourselves to continue to make the good choices. Here's what I've been doing. Anybody doing Whole30? I know. Some people are, like, so tired of hearing about it. Like, our half of the office, um, uh, pastoral staff and admi- administrative staff, we're all doing Whole30. Some of us are cheating. Anyways, we're all doing Whole30. So we're day 20. And, you know, if you don't know what that is, it's a restrictive diet. You're not supposed to eat sugars. You're not supposed to eat grains or legumes. Um, um, no canola oil. Okay, I don't need to go into this. But honestly, what is I love about it, it's not just like, okay, let's get health. Let's get skinny. <laughs> let's get, like, let's shed the pounds. And I'm sure it could help with that. But depending on how much you eat, I don't want to get into it. But here's what it is. It restricts you from certain foods. And sometimes we find that when we refrain from some things, we get healthier. That's, that's, just, what, that's just what happens. And this idea of refraining from things and choosing to refrain from some things helps us retrain our brains to pick other kinds of foods. That's exactly what Whole30 is and some of these other diets. That, that's not the only one. It's just the one that I know more about. But it's, they, they celebrate these non-scale victories, which means non-scale victories are these victories that aren't just standing on a scale and being like seeing weight drop. The non-scale victories are changing the way we view food, changing the relationship we have with food. And here we go right now. I think this church, I think us as people of God need to start refraining from things, refraining from relationships, refraining from some habits, and start retraining ourselves in some good habits, in some regular attendance at church, at regular attendance with community, at regular being vulnerable with other people, and retraining our brains to stop thinking of ourselves badly. We need to refrain and then retrain. And you're going to be like, that's so, like, that's so easy for you to say. That's so, that's, the, but it's just really hard when, when, when people have done this. That's victim mentality. Do not be a victim of your choices. Be empowered by the God who says, take every thought captive. If he says that you could take every thought captive, then we can take every thought captive. We have the strength. We have the power. That is what Paul is encouraging us to do. Have the mindset of Christ. That's what Philippians is talking about. Have the mindset of Christ. You can have it. We can be empowered to retrain our minds and take every single thought captive. I learned this from um, Dr. Carolyn Leaf. She's a great um, neuroscientist. Wait, well, how do you call her? <laughs> neuroscientist. And she studies the brain and really our relationship with food, our relationship with toxic thoughts. And here's what she says. And this is the research that she has found for over 30 years of studying the brain. That 75 to 95% of illnesses that plague us today are a direct result of our thought life. What we think about affects us physically and emotionally. Again, physical and mental or emotional health are not mutually exclusive. It affects, our thoughts affect both physical and emotional issues. It's an epidemic of toxic emotions. Toxic emotions. The average person has over 30,000 thoughts a day. Think about that. And the word of God says you can take every thought captive. You could take 30,000 thoughts captive. That is the promise from God. Take every thought captive for the peace and the joy that he wants us to have. But I want you to hear this. Research shows that fear all on its own triggers more than 1,400 known physical and chemical responses and activates more than 30 different hormones. What does that mean? There are intellectual and medical reasons to forgive one another. 
There are intellectual and medical reasons to forgive one another. So toxic waste generated by toxic thoughts causes different diseases like diabetes, cancer, asthma, skin problems, allergies. Consciously control your thought life, she says. Consciously control your thought life. Take captive every single thought and you need to have a brain detox. You're like, okay, I'm fine. I have a great relationship with food. I don't make bad choices with food. So some of us need to start getting on that bandwagon of detoxing our brains and our thoughts. And what does that mean? I want you to just kind of, I'm just going to ask you a slew of questions. And I want you to start thinking and start listing in your brain how you answer some of these questions. How many could have, would have, should have statements have you made already this morning? What, how many of those thoughts have you thought? Could have, would have, should have. Number two, how many if onlys were a part of your inner vocabulary today? Third, how many times have you replayed in your head the conversation or situation that repaint or that pained you or one that hasn't even occurred yet? That that mystical theoretical thing that could happen later in the day. How many of those thoughts have crossed your brain already this morning? I feel like some of you are like, I'm up to like twenty thousand. How many scenarios have you created of the unpredictable future? How much speculation taking out of your day? How much speculation did you have when you saw like seven people look at you on the street and then eight people possibly look at your outfit when you walked into the church? What kind of thoughts were you thinking then? How honest are you with yourself? Is there anybody in your life that tells you the honest truth? Like not the friend that you've had forever that you know they're just going to say it's going to be okay. How many people are you allowing in your life so that you can be honest with them? Another question, how distorted is your thinking? Are you forming personal, your personal identity around something like my disease, my body, my fat, my this, my that, my, my weakness, my laziness? And you start identifying yourself with those things that you say are yours. God says, God says in his word that I have made you fearfully and wonderfully created you. He said that I have given you the power to have a sound mind. He says that I have created you out of the depths of your being. I formed you in your mother's womb. I have a purpose for you. So don't get stuck on what you're identifying yourself with. How many of those things have you been able to count up that you have thought of today already? It's toxic. Get it out of your brains. Get it out of your minds. And just start changing that. When you take a thought captive, you not only you not only remove it from your brain, but you think of the good things. You think on what Philippians says, what is true, what is honest, what is worthy, what is excellent, what is praiseworthy. Those are the things we replace our thoughts with. And we say, no, I am the most, I am the son or the daughter of the most high God. I am the one who is allowed to have a sound mind. I am the one who has the power to take every thought captive. That's what we need to replace those toxic thoughts with so that we might reform our minds. And and let me tell you this right, right now. When we transform our thought life, we give glory to God. It says in Romans 12, 1, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, your bodies, your physical, mental, emotional, your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what the will of God is. Transform your minds. Remove the toxic thoughts and start filling yourself with the word of God. Start filling yourself with the truth of his word. Now, when my dad was here a few months ago, he had this really, okay, I did do some graphic design, so I'm super snotty about graphic design. I'm going to just throw it out there, another thing that I'm dysfunctional with, okay? But he, he had this pamphlet, and it, was, it looked like it possibly came from the 90s, um, and, and you may have seen it out there. Like somehow he snuck all these pamphlets on one of our tables out there. I go, this is the work of my father because I know how positive my dad is. Growing up, he would always tell us when we would get down on ourselves or when we were sad about something, he'd be like, when we had a breakup, my dad would be like, you need to have a BMA. 
Like, what's a PMA? Positive mental attitude. You need to start getting the word in you. PMA, PMA, PMA. Do we have PMS girls? No, we have PMA. Sorry, I threw that out there. <laughs> but I'm telling you, he snuck that out there. But what I love about it is like all these lies that we tell ourselves, and he debunks it. I should have brought them. I don't know where they are because I think I threw them away because the design was so ugly. Anyways, on the right side, it was all these scriptures that replaced those lies. Get in the word. Get in the word. Take every thought captive. And the only way you're going to take it captive with eternal impact is by getting to the word of God. And finally, rejoin and rejoice. How do we regain? How do we regain our health mentally and physically? We're going to rejoin and rejoice. You're like, rejoin what? Rejoin the gym? Because you're saying I need to go to the gym to be healthy? Maybe. But here's what I want to say. It's more rejoining community. Rejoin community because what happens when we're unhealthy in our minds? What happens when we're unhealthy in our bodies? And when we're unhappy with ourselves and then we start funneling off into this abyss, we realize that we have slowly removed ourselves from community and have isolated ourselves and start buying into the lies that God or that the enemy has been feeding us. Like you need to get healthy before you're part of that group of community or that that community group because they're all reading the word and you and you don't know the word really that well and you're unhealthy so you need to just get healthy before you get back in no rejoin community now Re, there's no reason to separate yourself from community and people who are going to sharpen you and and you know maybe there's fear maybe there's like oh they're going to judge me well you know what better for you to be judged and get better than not have community at all and then learn how to forgive one another. Learn how to talk to people. Learn to tell people, you know, the way you said that was coming off judgy, but I'm committed to community and I'm going to join community. I'm going to be a part of sisterhood. I'm going to be a part of brotherhood. I'm going to be a part of that Bible study group. I'm going to be a part of that thing that my work does with all the other Christians. And I'm not going to be ashamed of being a part of community because I know that my mental and physical health depend on it. We are called to be a part of the family of God. Set apart to be a part of a family of God. Set apart, sometimes dysfunctional as it is, but at least we have hope, right? At least we have tools. At least we have the spirit of God in us that can correct us, that can transform us, that can make us stronger than we were when we were isolated from community. That is what God has called us to. So rejoin and rejoice because it says this in Hebrews 10, 22 through 25. And I've got to read it in the message because it is oh so good. So let's do it. Let's do it, church. Let's get healthy. Let's get healthy physically. Let's get healthy mentally. Let's get healthy emotionally because this is what he says. Full of belief, confident that we're presentable inside and out. We want to be presentable to the God that created us and respect who he created by honoring him through our inside all the way out. Let's be confident that we're presentable inside and out. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He always keeps his word. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out, not avoiding worshiping together as some do, but spurring each other on. Do you hear that? Not giving up on meeting with one another and worshiping together, but spurring one another on. We need community. Community is our heart. If community is our heart here at Project Church, then if we're not meeting, then our heart is getting unhealthy. So let's get healthy. You have been brought here. You have been called here. So let's get healthy. Join community. Pray with one another. Spur one another on and just say, hey, brother, you're not looking like our father. You need to start bearing the image of our father. Hey, sister, you're not looking. What are you? What are you wearing? What are you? No, sorry, not wearing. I'm not going to judge you for that. But what are you putting into your bodies? What, why are you isolated? Where have you been? Let's be a community. Let's belong to something that God has called us to belong to because God has asked us to be whole in spirit and soul and body to be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what he has called us to. Let's be whole. Let's encourage one another. And I hope you're encouraged today in the same way 
that Paul encouraged the church of Philippi. I wanna encourage Project Church, let's keep going. God has called us not to just like make it from Sunday to Sunday setting up, but he said, I have a building for you. I have a promise, let's get there, let's do it. Let's finish strong, come on church, you can do this. You can do this. Let's do it. Let's allow God to increase our capacity. Let's allow him to do through us more than we can ever ask think or imagine. Sometimes we just expect the more that we can ever ask, think, or imagine to be something that we're going to be blessed with. No, I'm going to start praying that our capacity increase, that we trust God to do more through us than we can ever ask, imagine, or think of. We're not going to say no to his leading. We're going to say yes. Expand us. Expand us. And may we make greater impact for the kingdom. So here's the thing, church, and I'll close with this. I was talking with a couple backstage before I got on, and I realized, I was like, I don't totally have a clear way of how I'm gonna close this. But I felt like the Lord spoke through Aaron, one of our, our team leaders. We were out there in the front talking about trusting God. Here's the thing. He spoke the word trust, and I was like, in my spirit, it resonated. I said, yes, yes, and amen. When we are trying to level up, when we're trying to re-energize ourselves, sometimes we do it in our own strength. Sometimes we do it in our own, like, excitement. Sometimes we're doing it in the only way that we know how to muster it up inside of us. But God has called us to trust Him, to trust Him first. So it is like the underlying foundation of anything that we do to trust the God who created us to carry out his promises through us so I want to ask you today here you want to level up your life you want to be re-energizing your vision and your relationships in your in your um, what is this physical and mental health you want to be re-energized in those areas then we're going to trust God in a way that we've never trusted him and I want to just ask you today do you trust him with your life? When you have relationship with people, you trust them, right? But sometimes we fear leveling up and we don't even take a step closer to community because we're so fearful. And I bet I, I would even go as far as saying because there's something broken in your relationship with God. So what is it that you're fearing? What is it that you're not trusting? I'm asking you right now to make a full commitment to him this morning to give your life to him and say God me leveling up has nothing to do with me climbing or me achieving it has everything to do with me surrendering and allowing you to do what only you can do through the person that you created the body that you created the mind that you created if you want to give your life wholly and completely to him and you say I want to follow you all the days of your life I want to give you an opportunity right now. So if every head would bow, every eye closed in this room.